this works. Okay, so uh, let's all get to our seats, and I want to remind that you should rate and comment and blog about these presentations, and then conf in general. And now uh, let's welcome our next speaker, Adam. Oh, hi everyone, can you hear me? That's great. So you might have an open source project which you want to build. You want to distribute it to your users and you want to make sure that users will have no problems to install your project. So what would you do? Let's use Copper for that. Uh, what I'm going to talk about now uh, is what can you do with Copper? How can you do it? I will have two demos and then something about the Copper project itself. So first, what Copper is? Copper is a build service, which means that it can transform your source code, it can build it and create a, an RPM repository. So your users will be able to install your project. And there are three steps and I will show you what you can do in all three steps. The first is source code. We actually support four types of source code now. Uh, you can have source RPM, which you can submit, actually upload to any public server. This was the initial functionality and about half a year ago it was the only one. And then we added storage to Copper so we will be able to, we are able to store the source RPMs and also we can build directly from Tito, uh, from Git using Tito or Mox, uh, Mox CM plugin. Jay, how many of you know Tito? Okay. Was it? Okay, so there was a talk yesterday about Tito, so you can have a look. It's basically a small program which you can run in your Git repository and it will build your packages automatically in, on your machine locally. And Mock SCM, how many of you know Mock? Oh, that's better. So Mock can build from Git and we are using the plugin in Copper as well. So that's about source code. And let's see, there are two, actually two versions. One is like snapshot and what is live code. And if we have live code, we might be able to just uh, store the URL to your Git and build from it directly. So that's what we did. So there are three ways of initiating your build. You can submit the source as usual, as before. And then you can store the information about your build in Copper and do build with just one click with no submitting everything or automatic builds using webhooks. This is now supported on GitHub only and I will show you in the demo how to do that. And then, yeah, some other bonus things you can do in builds. You can do external repositories. You can use dependent projects if you require some packages from something else. Enable, disable internet access and modify truths. This might be important if you want to build software collections and use comps XML. And then when you build your packages, by default, this creates your repository automatically. But if you have some uh, large project which consists of 10 packages, you can just build each one, each one and then click for your repo to be created. So that was about the what. There are some build types and you can do full automatic process or just manual in every step. And now I will show you how and this would be the demos, almost live demos. And I have two prepared. First is submitting build via command line and then I will use the web interface. So. I did screenshots because I don't believe in live demos. <laughs> so first what you need to do is install Copper CLI, which is our client, so I will do it right now, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now I want to build some source. 
I just picked random source from the internet. So I will download it, yay. And I've got it in my directory. Now I need to set up my copper CLI and it's something like login to copper. I have to put my token there. So I edit the file and I can get this from the URL. You can also see a link in the bottom of the web UI. So this is something like my token. I will save it. And now let's see what Copper CLI can do. First, I need to do create a project. So I will create a project. I will call it DevConf project. Yay. And then it's time to build a package. I'm using the source RPM and upload, uploading directly to Copper from my machine. So I specified Copper CLI build. This is the project and package. And now it's building. Actually, it's uploading to Copper, running, and succeeded. At this point, I have the package built and the repo ready for installation. Now, anyone can install your package, so you can run this command, dnf copper enable and copper project name, which will add the project to your computer. And if you're enabling random project, this is important. You need to know what the project does, because copper is community project and everyone can use it. So there might be some testing stuff, some dangerous stuff. So this is important to keep in mind. And I can just install it. That's it. So that was the first demo. And now I would like to show you how to do the automatic builds, which is the new thing we can do. So this is how our user interface look like, looks like. So I will click on new project. I will select some name. This is DevConf demo 2. And on the same, same page, I can choose the truth. I just chose Fedora 23. And I click on create. My project is created now. So let's submit the first build. So I click on builds, new build. And I would like to use Tito, which is the script I talked about before. And this will do a build directly from my Git repository. So I will need the public clone URL. And I'm also checking test option, which will build my last commit every time. So I can submit it. And it's importing. Let's have a detail look. And it succeeded. And I can install it the same way as before. And now let's have a look at the automatic stuff. So this is the automatic build. If I want to enable it for this project, I need to go to packages. I can click on my package, which I just built. And there is something called default source. I can set default source to any package in my project. So I will just do this. I will need the same URL, the Tito option as before, and I can also enable the webhook rebuild. Submit. And now I need to set up GitHub. So I will go to settings here, webhooks, and this is my URL, this is my token. So I will need to add it to my GitHub repository, which is under settings, webhooks and services, new webhook. And I can paste it here. And that's it. I click and I can now submit new builds with every commit using copper. And what we plan in future is those small banners, which can be added to your project page. So you can do something like very basic continuous integration and test your every build. So that's everything from the demos. Do you have any questions so far? Yeah. 
that? Yeah. So the question was if you can use something like Fed package in Fedora. Not at this moment, but we are using the same storage, the same disk git as Fedora does, and we are planning to do that. We, we would like to open it for everyone, so it's coming. Yeah. yeah, you can actually do that if you use the mock plugin, you can specify your git, your spec file, and it can be git or SVN. So it's supported does it now. Really, but does it really pick only the, the packaging stuff or does it work, does it work for like the, the whole source code in the repository? It will take the whole source code. That, that's not what I want. <laughs> yeah, so I will talk about contribution later. So maybe you can send a patch, that would be very nice to have. Yeah. The, the GitHub invitation is full. Uh, Thank you. Any plans for taggers? Actually, not plans, but we just didn't think about it. This is very new. We just wanted to test it with GitHub, and I think yeah, it can come. Cool. Why not? Tagger has GitHub support, and it is similar to GitHub, but not identical. So All right. You probably share a lot of code. I can have a look at that. Yes, if you use Tito, oh, the question was if I can just use tags, right, in Git. If you use Tito, you can specify that you want to build your tag releases only. So if you don't check the test as I did, you can build the tags. Actually, uh, Tito manages it itself, so it will create a version with every tag. Yeah. Um, you said that it's possible to create a build uh, via Venture. Yes. Is it also possible to create something and build as it is? Like uh, to install packages in WebVI and. Uh, Thanks for the question. The question was if I can trigger something when the build succeeded. Yes, we emit fed message with every build, so you can check on that if it helps. Fed message is a message to IRC from Copper. Not just IRC. Yeah. I'm sorry? Which version of Tito? Uh, I'm not sure actually. Uh, yeah, it's one of the host actually. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to the copper project. As I said, we are moving. Uh, I didn't say that. I'm saying it now. We are moving our project to GitHub as well because we want to enable pull request, and we would like to test and use the automatic builds of copper in copper, and then install copper from copper. So that's one thing. And about the contribution, uh, I did something with Vagrant. Do you know Vagrant? Yeah? So if you want to contribute to our project and you have something, let's say, small to change and you want to test it, you can clone our repository and run this one single command and it will create on your machine the complete development environment. We now support just front-end and this git, so you will not be able to make builds. But any changes in the UI and stuff, you can test it with this. And it will not break your system. So, so that's about contribution. And that's all for me today.
Just to remember that Copper is a build service which make your repository. And that's it. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, I think Mirek, Mirek will answer that as well. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the discussion. We can take it outside <laughs> and compare the build service of the world. Actually, yeah, we can. It's not on the recording. So, have we got any other questions about copper? Yeah. Uh, we actually support uh, the PC architectures, which is one, uh, which is i386 and x86-64. And there is also PowerPC. Uh, we don't support ARM, but we have some machines, I think. So we will be supporting in the future. It was great for me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so thank you for coming for this a bit short talk. What are the plans for the future? I mean, is it there you haven't, you haven't talked all that much about what, what, what you want to do next. So. so actually, we would like to make the automatic builds more stable and also we will be supporting things like building from PyPy, CPAN. And Ruby Gems, yeah. 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 So what happened to Dopper? Where's that? What happened to Dopper? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. So for those who don't know, Docker uh, is a uh, uh, building of Docker images out of the copper uh, projects, which is very simply wrapper, uh, just enable the copper images uh, for, for, for the uh, resulting Docker image. Uh, well, uh, we had it. We have it done somehow. There was a long delay because the Fesco, uh, we finally get uh, approved about and uh, do Docker changed the uh, web interface and because Docker doesn't have basically API, we have it programmed as, as using screen scrape code. So we screen scrape the web and click instead of the user to create the Docker images, which is not ideal. Uh, and just before the Christmas, they changed the interface. So we have to done it again. And uh, well, after Christmas, uh, we had a different work uh, like uh, migrating because our servers were still on the Fedora 21, so we migrated to something stable, which was finished just recently. Uh, so now we are considering uh, the deployment of the Doper. And well, uh, my question is technically, uh, uh, I'm, so I'm still not sure whether uh, it is. It it is worth of the work, uh, uh, whether we should deploy that or, or stop that project before we uh, actually announce it. So uh, I'm s it's, it's, it's quite fragile because of that screen scraping code. So uh, I'm not sure if, if other users will be interested in, in that, actually. Uh, 
uh, yeah, but uh, but that uh, OBS uh, OB, OSBS uh, have uh, its own uh, uh, what's it called uh, uh, Docker registry. So the, the the original idea was uh, easily enable creation of the Fedora images on the Docker Hub original Docker Hub, because if you look on the Docker Hub, there's uh, Ubuntu, 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 so Debian, the Debian. The hard part is the part we want, is that what you're saying? Pardon? The hard part is the part that you want. Yeah. Which part is easy, hard part is hard, I don't know, I don't know. All right, so that's it from me. Thank you. If anyone asked a question and they haven't had a scarf yet, please come to the front to collect one. Yeah. Or if you answered a question, please come to the front to get one. <laughs>